Okay, we are here today. I'm here with my friend Whitney Cliff, who is Mrs. South Carolina, United States. Welcome, Whitney. Hi, Laura. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. I know we've been trying to connect for a while, and I'm so glad it's all working out. I know. I feel every time we had one scheduled, something with work came up. So I'm so glad today worked out, <laughs> even though it, we're quarantined, but it works. <laughs> That's what we do. That's how we are multitaskers, right? That's exactly what happens. And so I'm just so blessed that we're being able to do this today. And I wanted us to be able to continue the kind of conversations that we have just casually um, as sisters in this pageant to be able to share what's on our hearts, to be able to share what is our passion and our purpose, and then to be able to share that with so many more people. So I thought, let's have a conversation with the queens. Yes, I love it. I love the topic. Yes. So, Whitney, do you want to tell us what is your, well, first of all, how did you get started in pageantry or why did you get started in pageantry? Um, okay, so my first pageant, I was a senior in high school. I just lost 50 pounds. Um, and so I just, I wanted to do something to celebrate me. And so that's how I got started. But then um, I didn't do anything after that. And um, as an activity director at Limestone University, the uh, Miss Limestone pageant just fell on my lap last year. Uh, I loved every second of it. I loved meeting my girls. Uh, and I was just like, you know, I haven't done a pageant in almost 10 years. I think I, think I should do one. Um, well, as I was looking around, um, none just really fit my schedule, unfortunately. And so I wasn't gonna do one and then um, just scratched it off my list, set it to the side. And then I just, I had a mental breakdown last year because I was training for a bikini competition. And, uh, yeah. I just, yeah, I, um, and so I was training for a bikini competition and, you know, my husband, he, we had a date night planned. It was going to be my cheat night. I already had everything approved with a coach and well, he got home late. We couldn't go because I didn't want to eat after nine because the way my mind works. And I just, we were in Applebee's and I was just like, I can't eat here. Like, this is like, this just doesn't go with my plan. And I had a mental breakdown and I was like, no woman should ever feel like this. Like no one should have to go through this pressure, whether you're planning for a pageant, planning for a bikini competition or even life. And I know a lot of times someone who suffers with mental health or eating disorder they look at the menu first before they go. A lot of women do that. Um, and so that's something, you know, people say eat intuitively or plan your meals. Well, you know, it's just, it's a vicious cycle and it's something I don't want women to have to uh, just suffer with and struggle with. And so I was like, you know, I have to help other women. And so my platform was originally going to be eating disorders, but I was like, you know, it's kind of like, um, like an AB scenario where like, your mental health actually causes the eating disorder. And so I want to focus on mental health because it can reach more people than the, just those suffering with eating disorders. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's really personal, but yeah. that's, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot, yeah. That's, a lot, that's how a lot of this starts for a lot of women that get into, um, that they join a pageant. You know, it's because of something that changed for them, changed their life. And, and they want to share it. They want to help more people. At least that, you know, that, that's how it was for me too. Um, so why, why did you get into pageantry? Yeah, um, I got into pageantry. I, I was, I've always wanted to help um, women. I've always wanted to be, you know, somebody that can um, help women to be all that they can be. And that is because um, I had a situation where I went through um, a fire actually with my family oh. in the middle of the night. And um, we had, we literally had to escape for our lives. And I ended up doing it alone because my husband got um, uh, smoke inhalation in the fire. And I was at a point where I was like, I had to make a choice. I had to make a choice of, do I choose strength or do I just, crumble. And it was a defining moment for me where I reached down deep and I discovered that we are stronger than we think. Mm -hmm. And it was the same time that I thought, what, what do I do with this? How can I take this experience that was so life-changing for me? And how can I use it to help other women? Because like you, you never wanted women to have to feel like they had to make that choice. And I wanted women to know that they have a choice, that they can choose strength and that circumstances don't define you 
and that I really wanted that women to be able to experience what that feels like. Um, I know you and I are both, you mentioned your fitness um, bikini competition, so I've never done that, but I am a fitness coach and, and I'm an instructor and it's, it, it tied together this whole idea of strength for me, of being physically strong to me is just a catalyst for, for inner strength and connecting mind, body, and soul. Um, so, so tell me about what you do with fitness too. Yeah, so I used to be an um, actual college offer coach and strength coach. Um, and then on the side, I did personal training. But to be honest, like on my own, to be successful in my own fitness journey, I just, I got tired of pouring into other people and not myself. And so I actually stepped away from training other people. Um, I have a select few clientele that I will train uh, just because I know them um, and I know their backgrounds. And I know that they understand my crazy busy life. And I'm so thankful for their cooperation. Um, but no, right now, um, I really want to do a bikini competition because I want to be that bikini pro. I want to be, you know, I want to have that lifestyle. And I've learned um, just recently, unfortunately. Um, so I went from eating 1,250 calories a day on this bikini prep and, and two hours or more of cardio. Um, and it created health problems. Um, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Um, I have to take testosterone shots. I have to take a T3 supplement now because um, I'm borderline Hashimoto's. Um, and I just, I have all these, I have to take a DIM supplement, which is an, uh, an estrogen um, regulator. And so it's just, you know, when you sacrifice your health for something, it's not worth it to me. And so I really had to reassess, like, how do I want to live my life? Because I saw, I saw a girl eating waffles on her peak week and, you know, peak week, you're not to me, peak week's always been like you cut back and like you don't drink water. Well, then there's other people doing the complete opposite, eating like 2000 calories on peak week, drinking a full gallon of water. I'm just like, I want to live like that. Um, and so I got help. Um, I'm now eating um, about 1700 calories a day, doing 30 minutes of cardio. And, you know, at the end of the day, I did gain a little bit of weight because of, you know, the decrease in cardio and increasing calories. But if that's my biggest problem, gaining weight before a national pageant, I think I'm doing pretty good. But um, no, my fitness journey started when I wanted to um, be recruited in college. Um, I was overweight in high school. I was a goalkeeper. And back then, um, where I came from, goalkeepers didn't run. They just stood in the goal. And so it just, you know, it, I packed weight on because I didn't do the cardio. And so um, when I lost the 50 pounds to be recruited in college, that's when I did my first pageant, um, got into college athletics, really loved it. I love the um, just athletic ability that people had. Um, and so I just, I became a personal trainer as well, just I want people to feel how I felt when I had that transformation. So it's, it's a lot. Um, and I think I saw that you did beach body. I do. I, yes. I, I used to be a beach body coach as well um, back in 2016, but I didn't keep up with it. But um, tell us about your beach body journey. Yeah, it's been a journey for sure. I mean, I've always been like I was an athlete as well in high school and in college. Um, <clears throat> and I um, struggled a little bit with eating as well, you know, really just wanting to be, um, you know, control, right? Like you said, <laughs> it comes down to when you can, when, when I felt like I couldn't control my life, I felt like I controlled the one thing that I could. Um, and so I did have an eating disorder while I was in college, um, but I was able to get help for it. And my why was bigger than my problem. And that's how I really got through it. You mentioned wanting to, you know, be um, a bikini competitor and that drove you. And for me, it was, I wanted my career. I wanted to graduate from school. I wanted to get out there and I wanted to be the best that I could be. Sometimes our journey takes us down paths that we don't expect, but I do find that we all learn from it. Um, and so I've been able to look back and reflect on what can I learn from this situation? Even when you go through a dark spot, there's always something you can learn. And it's always part about becoming you. It's becoming, you peel back the layers, right? And, and, and more and more you, you're, you're coming and you're coming into being all that you're meant to be. And that's why that's really my passion and my purpose and my platform. And there's so many different ways that I can do that. I can um, support you on your journey. I can support all the other women that are in this journey together because we all have something that we're passionate about that our purpose is. 
after I, I have two kids, so I have a son who is now um, 12 and a daughter who's 10. And after I had my, um, my second daughter, life changed and I was like, oh, I can't go to the gym anymore. I couldn't even, and I'm a runner and I, I couldn't go run anymore because I had these two like babies and they didn't like the stroller and I, didn't wanna, I couldn't get to the gym because I had two babies and I wasn't gonna leave them. And so I had to find a different solution. And that's literally when Beachbody came into my life on the DVDs and I could like, literally I had a kid on one side and a kid on another side and two different chairs and my DVD in front of me and I hit play and I lost the baby weight. That was over 10 years ago. I have been doing it for 10 years. I have never looked back. Um, I became certified to teach their programs. I have helped countless women to be able to have a plan, right? It's not the only plan. I love um, yoga. I love the gym. I love running. I love other things too, but it is definitely, I found a plan for people. And especially now when some of the gyms were closed, um, to have a solution to be able to do it anywhere has been something that was a blessing for me. So it's definitely been something that's worked for me to keep me, you know, fit and healthy and how to eat right because it all comes together, right? So yes, thank you for asking. It's been something that's been a blessing for me to be able to share with other people too. Well, good. I know I really enjoyed um, getting to meet people in network marketing when I was with um, Beachbody. So that's awesome that, um, that it's worked out with you and you've helped so many women. Yes, it, um, and that's what we do though, right? Like we do, we, we help um, and we show up in our community too. I mean, one of my favorite things about being in a pageant, and that was quite honestly the thing that surprised me, but I loved it the most, is doing the appearances and going to help our community and showing up and having people be, thank you so much for being here. And just by using your voice and your crown and your banner, not that you need that for community service, but it brings so much more support and awareness to places where, especially now with the COVID situation, people just need hope. You know what I mean? And so I, it's been my favorite part. I've been able to get out there, even in the quarantine situation. And, you know, you, you have to get creative, right? You can wear a mask. You have to practice social distancing. You can do a lot virtually, too. Um, but that's one of the blessings, I think, that a lot of people don't understand about being in a, in, as a part of a pageant and being mm -hmm. united for family and community, which is what the United States system is about. Oh yeah. No, that is so awesome. I know with my, I've struggled with, um, imposter syndrome this entire, um, quarantine, just because being a queen, I haven't been able to get out to the community because we've been shut down. Um, and I actually, I had to have my pageant coach pour into me just because, um, I work six to seven days a week at the college being activities director. And so, you know, I walk with students. Um, I do all these act extra activities I don't have to do with students just to pour into them and provide them opportunities that they don't have. And so, you know, my university, because our town is so small, that technically is my community. Um, and it's something, you know, because I see you guys posting all these photos with charities um, and at events and with people in your community. And I'm just, I'm just like, I don't have time for this, you know, but like my morning walks with my students or my evening walks or my Walmart runs or my Bible studies, like, you know, that's my way of giving back. And so that's something I've had to come to terms with because it's diff it's a different way of giving back than what people normally see or what people normally do. I think, but that's just what we have to do, right? You just, especially now you have to get creative and one small act anything can change one life you know and you never know who is watching you know you, you never know who's listening you never know even people that are silent not engaging are seeing what we do and that's why i feel like it's just important to just do what you can and or get on you know line and um do something virtually like a lot of the fundraising opportunities right now a lot of organizations are having to go virtual and okay. so we can do our part just by sharing that and showing up you know it's right. definitely been a blessing to myself <laughs> to give back and to see 
to see the impact on people has been one of my favorite things. I think, I think that's one thing I definitely want to share with and invite other women to join us um, as we continue our journey, um, going to nationals in a couple of weeks. <laughs> but the journey is, you know, to me, it's just, it doesn't end. You know what I mean? It's kind of this constant journey that we're always on that I kind of don't want to have end, like no matter what, because it's been the best part. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. I know I'm so ready for nationals just to get down there. So to meet everybody and, you know, to get glammed up. So it's, that's, that's a good part too. I'm not going to lie. You know, we do get to get dressed up, but it's also a lot of work. I think a lot of people don't understand how much, you know, work goes into it too. But to me, the work just, just pays off. And I feel like I know you, <laughs> we've been talking <laughs> You know, yeah. we've been talking like this, either on the phone or on Zoom for a while. And so it's so great that you get down to meet everybody and you're like, I, I feel like I know you already. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I know. I love our group chat. And, you know, I would like, I literally thought yesterday that I was not going to be able to come just because of COVID and everything. Um, but yesterday I did call nationals. And so they said, if I am positive, I am quarantined, they'll work. Um, around my check-in and interview time in case like I can't get down until Monday or Tuesday night. So well, that's great. It happens. Yes. Yeah, so I'm thankful for that. But you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Hopefully tomorrow I'll be negative. Yes. <laughs> Fingers crossed for yeah. sure. Um, well, I know that we also have faith as one of our connections. Um, it's been a journey that I feel like I'm very open about sharing about that because it's who I am. I know you are too. Mm -hmm. And um, so do you have a favorite Bible verse or a, or a quote that just like is so, you know, connected to you that you want to share with us? Yes. So um, my favorite Bible verse is um, Psalms 31. Oh, and I, I think it's 14 or 17. Um, her arms are strong for her task that the Lord has set before her. And, you know, I picked that verse as my favorite quote um, early on in my, in my fitness career, just because women, we get so afraid of lifting weights and getting bulky that this verse to me shows we're supposed to be strong. You know, we're supposed to we're supposed to work out in some way, you know, like we're supposed to be strong because the Lord's given us a task. And, um, that that's my favorite verse. So. I, I love that one. It's, it's so perfect for you, Whitney. It really is. And, you know, I know God gives us our own verse. Um, for sure. He's given me one and mine is uh, Jeremiah 20, 29, 11, which is, I know the plans I have for you plans for good and not for evil plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans for hope and a future. And, you know, it's, but it's gotten me through tough times, but also through amazing times and knowing that my hope and my future includes this journey, includes this group of amazing women, includes continuing this journey. And, um, and, you know, I love that you talked about strength because strength is, you know, part of my platform and it's, it's like true strength comes from within and true strength come, I find comes from my faith and, you know, and comes from God pouring into us and us being able to share the light that he gives us with other people. So I'm so glad we got to talk today. Yes, thank you. This was so much fun. I totally agree. So let's do it again. I can't wait to see you in a couple of days now we're down under we're under two weeks so yes so and we should do a video when we're down there oh we're definitely doing a video when we're down there absolutely it's absolutely. a day beautiful palm beach <laughs> <laughs> i am looking forward to warm weather because it's not warm here no it's raining here today i'm surprised my hair is like straight still <laughs> <laughs> well you look beautiful thank you so much for your time today Thank you. And thanks for asking me to do this. I had so much fun. So. I did too. I want to do it again. Okay. Well, you have a great day. Thanks, Whitney. Bye. Bye.